We thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you praise for the gift of life. We adore your holy name for bringing us into your presence once again. You made all things through your word, Lord. We therefore submit ourselves unto you. Let your word be a blessing to us, Lord. Touch us in the places where we need to be touched today. Save, Lord, the lost. Save, Lord, the lost. Heal the sick, O God. I pray bring hope to those who have lost all hope. Bind those who are wounded, Lord. Deliver those who are in pain, O God. I pray open the prisons to those who do not know how they are going to get out of the issues they find themselves in. Do something new in our lives today and let your name alone be glorified. We give you praise, O God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It is a joy to welcome you once again to the Apostolic Heritage. I believe that Psalm 23 has been a blessing to you. Because it's been a very great blessing to me. It's a chapter I can feast in all my life and still be full. Because you find God in every, every verse of it. And wherever you find God, you find all you need. I therefore thank God for this last part of it. We've dealt with all the verses and we are in verse number 6. Which says surely. Ah, I'll say I need. Let me hear you say it for me surely. Surely. I I love that word. Surely. Because many things in life are so uncertain. But surely. If I can't be sure of anything, I can be sure of this one. Surely. Goodness and mercy. Shall follow me. I don't know about you. But it shall follow me. Because it's a choice that you have to make. And what I love about this is that it will not follow me only for some days of my life. You know, you can enjoy certain things for a season and then those things leave you and your life becomes so lean and you suffer till you die. It's because life is so uncertain. But we're talking about his goodness and his mercy. And we are saying that it shall follow us. Not some days of our lives. But all of it. Praise God. Hallelujah. All of the days of our lives. That statement is so important. A lot of us, we jump when and we get excited when we hear about goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we fail to understand what follows. So we look into our lives and we don't find goodness and mercy. We confess it. We pray it. But we don't find it. Because we have failed to satisfy the condition that brings it. We have failed to take hold of the condition that makes it happen. And that condition is what we are talking about. And I will dwell. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is a choice that we all have to make. A choice of dwelling in a certain place. 
For that is where the blessing is. If you say honey, you don't know a word. What place are we talking about? The description we have here is the house of the Lord. So we ask ourselves, where is the house of the Lord? Is it Jerusalem? Jerusalem. Then we must all travel. So the poor can't make it. The poor will not have goodness and mercy. Is it upon Mount Zion? Then apart from traveling, you must climb. Old ladies, old men cannot enjoy goodness and mercy. Because their knees can't climb. Is it in Solomon's temple? Is it in Solomon's temple? Is it in this house? Where is it? Where is the house of the Lord? We must find this place. Because until you find this place, goodness and mercy will just be something you hear about or you talk about or you pray about, but you won't enjoy it. Because goodness and mercy can only be found in that place that we call the house of the Lord. So let's ask ourselves where does God live? If you, if you find where he lives, then you have found his house. Where does he live? This big God, into what house or what space can you confine him? So where does God live? Isn't he omnipresent? Isn't this God omnipresent? So if he is omnipresent, then why are we limiting him to a particular place or space? So the house of God. Where will we find? One time Jacob was on a journey. He was running away from his brother. No, brother. Because his life was in danger. If he said now, he had done something he shouldn't have done. Going through the bush at that time. It became dark. So he had to sleep. Oh. Such a rich man's son. He had to sleep in the bush. He looked for a pillow. He found none. What he used for a pillow was a stone. But that night, I said, but that night. You know, sometimes when you are in the worst seasons of your life, that is when you get the best revelations of your life. Sometimes when people think they have pushed you out of your destiny, that is rather when you begin to discover your destiny. Sometimes when you think you have lost all your riches, that is when you begin to discover the true riches of life. That night, he saw something he had never seen before. He saw a wonderful dream. In that dream, there was a ladder from earth to heaven. And the angels were, were going up and down. And he saw the Lord on top there. And God spoke to him in that dream. And when he woke up, wow! He was frightened. 
He was shocked. He said, this is an awesome place. This is the house of God. If that is the house of God, then we all still have to do what? Travel. But no. No. That is not the house of God. He called it the house of God. And by that he gave us the definition. The house of God is the place where God manifests himself. The house of God is where God does what manifests himself. So God is omnipresent. It means God is everywhere. But we all know that God does not manifest himself everywhere. So where God's manifest presence is, that is where we are calling the house of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. God has also said that He will manifest Himself in certain situations. He says His eyes are moving to and fro throughout the whole earth that He might show Himself strong. I will show my power. I will manifest myself. And he said, on behalf of those whose hearts are loyal to him. In the New Testament, it's made clear to us that God lives in us. Hello. God lives where? In us. God lives where? In us. In us. Because we, the children of God, we are called the temple of God. We are called the temple of the Holy Ghost. If you say, yeah, 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 member, no, we're friends, yeah, yeah, me, I saw it dying. Any home, come, come, I saw it dying. And if you don't believe it, Revelation 3 makes it clear. When Jesus said, I stand at the door and I'm knocking. He mentions doorbells because he's talking about a house. And if you still don't believe it, read on. He says, he that opens, I will come in. And when he comes in, he says, I will eat. With you. He's talking about an activity that is done in the house. Are you here with me? He is knocking on the door of our hearts. So that if we let him in, he will make that place his house. Which means he will manifest himself there. Are you here with me? He will do what? He will manifest himself there. So all you need to do to make yourself or your heart his house is to let him in. What did I say? Let him in. If you are an unbeliever, if you haven't been born again, what it means is that you come to the realization that you are a sinner. And that you need a savior. 
and that the judgment of God is upon you. But Jesus, through love, has died to pay the price for your sins. Yes, Christian. If you can accept what He's done for you, if you will agree that the shedding of His blood is adequate compensation for your sins, and if you will ask Him that, Lord, come in. I am thine. I give myself to you. Take me and save me. He will save you. Are you here with me? So that is step number one. Step number two. When he comes in, you must honor his presence. What did I say? You must do what? Honor his presence. Say it again for me. Honor his presence. How do you honor someone's presence? If I get into a space and you are there and I behave as if you are not there, am I honoring you? Am I honoring you? Okay. If I come into a room and I start doing things that you have told me never to do, am I honoring you? So to honor his presence, it's to know that he is there. I'm not saying imagine. When I say imagine, I am asking you to have a picture of something that is not real. But I'm saying you should know because he is there. I'm not saying imagine. No, his presence is real. So you should know he is there and treat him knowing that he is there. Honor him. If you honor God's omnipresence, he will honor you with his manifest presence. Let me say it again. If you honor God's omnipresence, he will honor you with his manifest presence. Wherever you find yourself, if you call upon God, he will answer. But a lot of people behave as if God is not there until they get into trouble. Then they say, oh, You know, these are his words. They that honor me, I will honor. But they that despise me, they shall be lightly esteemed. You go through the whole Bible. Find anyone that God honored. And you will realize that that person in some way also honored God. You can look at Joseph's life. God honored Joseph because Joseph honored God's omnipresence. Hello. How do we know this? Though he was sold into slavery, though they did many things against him, the Bible said, Bible say, and the Lord was with Joseph. Hello. Hi. And the Lord was with what? 
Joseph. And because the Lord was with him, goodness and mercy followed him. He prospered. How did he honor God's omnipresence? You know the story. One day, his master's wife wanted to do something evil with this young guy. He wanted to have sexual contact with him. This guy said, no. And his no was no. In this current world, sorry if you're a female, sorry for that. But averagely, when a woman says no, it means maybe. If you continue asking, you see that the no begins to change. Because she says no. If you saw or see Debbie, but she will take your gifts. She says no. Or see Debbie. She will go out with you. Or no be pie. She says no. Or see Debbie. But she'll sit in your car. Or bet no car. She says no. Or see Debbie. She'll come to your hall. Or be ba She says no. Or see Debbie. She'll eat the fried rice. Or be the fried rice. Or bet man no. Yet she say no. Ni neti no or see Debbie. When Joseph said no. Brother Joseph can say Debbie. The Bible said. Bible say he refused to be with her. Or say, or pull yourself on a no better now. Better now, mean champo wama. Now the old better now. Or so was your jaisa, mean pesa. And so to her. Are you here with me? It doesn't make sense. When this woman said, Come, look at. The security or guarantee she gave Joseph. Bra, mami, kase Joseph imrano. She adi odi man esa uba obenya. She said, Joseph, there's no one in the house. I said, Joseph, obi eni fi ha. We are alone. Yem kuwa ne yawa ha. Do you understand that? There's no one here. We are alone. I know you like it, but you are afraid you'll be caught. So today, I've made a special arrangement. There is no one here. Come, brah, come, bra. This guy said no. A brand taker said, Debbie. If persuasion fails, force, force must be applied. The woman grabbed. Hmm. No, what he was wearing as a chief servant. It was his glory. It was his position. The woman took hold of it. And Joseph let her have it. And Joseph man no fast Obi debi. I'm a papa de mami. Wait here. No way. Me no be pre. 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 Now I want to do it. Hmm? Eba hunam akonomu asema. When it comes to issues about lust, the Bible did not say be strong. The Bible said Flee. A ban honoma cono and sema Bible and Cassa Mahunya de Bible see Jane. One Cassa Manusu so Muna Cassa Jai 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 now we am the Bible do Babina who voice Jai no crowd and is sexy who encourage you know and yes, I would Jai who encourage you know. He left his cloak on no dear Ojana Tariano Emano. He ran away. At a time when there was no such statement in the Bible that flee fornication, flee adultery, someone left it. Why? The woman said there's no one in the house. But Joseph said, 
Nancy Joseph say. Joseph said. Joseph, I can say. This house is full. I say, Hanumo, ahayema. There's someone here. Obiwaha. He said, How can I do this and sin against God? I say, Be a ding, ne maya sadi, ne maya boni etia nyame. God is here. O nyame ewaha. And I will honor him. And until me the needy, I will honor him. Me the needy. It doesn't matter what I'll lose. I will honor him. And for when you're measuring, me the because because my gain, my future, my destiny is not in your hands. If you say me that, see, me shebre ni a men yano eni wu wunse. E tomri biya obi a nyame nam ne su shirao na e yane se wunka wu ye die wu dachi wunin sem inti e yane se onu wen shirawa wu ye upe jai na she jai na she ube wu se nyame biti ase your destiny is not in anyone's hands God can use men as channels to bless you but God is God never runs out of alternatives if you stop blessing me salvation salvation and deliverance will come from another place because my source is sure if he said baby Amen. 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 He can do it. So he said, I won't sin against God. He recognized God's omnipresence. So God also honored him with his manifest presence. The honor didn't come immediately. Is somebody hearing me? It didn't come immediately. But even if the vision tarries, wait for it, wait for it. For it shall surely. Come. The word is surely. Goodness and mercy. Surely. Goodness and mercy. Surely. Goodness and mercy. So long as it is goodness, it is sure. So long as it is mercy, it is sure. It will come to me. Look at how. Jesus put it. He put it in a certain way. He said, and he that sent me is with me. The father. He has not left me He has not left me alone. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Father has not done what left me alone. Listen to his reason. Because if he said, I do. Me ye. Because if he said, I do. Me ye. Always Bibia. those things Inyoma. that please him. Because I honor him, if he, said, he is honoring me. On also a dimini. Are you here with me? When you honor God, so the needy man He makes your life His dwelling place. He makes your life His dwelling place. So that His goodness and His mercy can follow you. All the days of your life. Some people, they come to understand this. But you see, they enjoy the goodness and mercy only for a season. Some just come to grab it and go. Some just come to taste it and go. So it cannot follow them. For you to enjoy his goodness and his mercy 
perpetually. Here comes the key word. It is called dwell. Say it for me, dwell. Let's go again, dwell. 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 It means stay. Praise God. Hallelujah. Stay there. Stay in that place where God's manifest presence is. Stay honoring him always. And he will honor you always. Stay there. Sometimes what is so I don't know how to put it. Some people, it's rather when they are close to their blessing that the devil opens a door of escape from their blessing and they walk out. Hmm. No, tiye ni ni peka. No, si chere. Minsu mi fa be baby. No, ko. No, ashwi ni nchira. Listen. For you to enjoy his goodness and mercy all the days of your life, you need to stay. Some will leave. Opa left. Opa ekoye. But Ruth stay. Nancy Ruth there or tonight. Are you here with me? The nine lepers who were healed, they left. But the one who was a Samaritan stayed. It got to a time a lot of the disciples left Jesus. It was the twelve and some few who remained. Because he said certain things they did not understand. Then he asked his disciples, will you also go? And Peter said, where will we go? Petro can say, "Na ehi na yebeko." You have the words of eternal life. Asu wona uwa dan kwa ensemno. We have no place. Yeni bebiya. Because we have no God. If you say yeni nyami biya, other than you. Ah, say you fru a nyami biya ni wa yawo. We are here ye to waha. stay. Say ye betina. We are here to stay. Ye waha say ye betina. Jesus puts it in another way. He uses the word abide. If you go to John 15, he's trying to say that if, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, if you stay in me, not if you visit me, if you stay. Then you will ask whatever you will and it shall be done unto you and need be what a promise but it belongs to those who stay it belongs to those who dwell where his presence is it belongs to those who honor him he's saying dwell means you can go so or no cassette tina net says obey to me It is a choice. You read Exodus 21. Let me try and end with this story. He talks about the situation when you have an Hebrew slave. If you have a slave that is a Hebrew, that person can serve you only for six years. So who were in the seventh year you must let him go free He's going, he can go with his wife and children if he brought them but if you give him a wife then he has to leave the wife and the children for you go you are free what do you but there was a clause. If that servant says, my master, I love you, 
I don't want to go. I like the life I have with you. Yes, I like the life I have with you. I don't only like your wages. I like your relationship more than the wages. The problem in Christianity today that a lot of people come in just because of breakthrough and blessing and not the relationship. But the closest, if the servant says, a master, no, I don't want to leave you. I still want to continue and serve you as a slave. Then he says, the master can take him to the door and pierce his ear with an oil to the door. No, I say, Sano. And then he will become his born servant forever. He could go out. But he could also choose to stay. I choose to stay. I choose to go for the relationship. I choose to serve this master. I choose to serve this God. And that is why the psalm begins by saying, The Lord, he is my shepherd. I have this relationship with him. I will stay where he stays. I will sleep where he sleeps. I will eat what he eats. His wish is my command. I will obey him. Because I know that his goodness and his mercy shall follow me. Not some of the days, and but all the days no, and then of my life. The mistake people are making today, they are waiting for goodness and mercy to come to them. No, it will never come to you. It's in a place. It's in his house. Get into his house. Open your heart to him. Get him in. Honor him. He will honor you. Honor him. He will honor you. Honor him. He will honor you. In your honoring him, you can go hungry sometimes. You will be rejected sometimes. But that is only for a season. I said it is only for a season. It is a trial of your faith. But that day will come when he will anoint your head with oil. When he will set a table before you in the presence of your enemies. I love those words. Hey, mm. He will set a table before me, even in the presence of my enemies. One day, the enemies. Who are looking for your life to kill you. They will stand and see you. Before your banquet. And, and those are the very people. Who will begin to hail you. For what God has done. In your when Joseph was. Riding in a chariot through Egypt. And they were saying, all should bow. That all should bow. Included Potiphar's wife. Included Potiphar himself. Your day will come. Your day will come. 
because you serve a living God. May his goodness and mercy follow you all the days of your life. And may you be careful to dwell in his house forever and ever. God bless you. This has been a live streaming session from the Steve Vive Assembly of the Apostolic Church Ghana. Thank you for logging on. We trust that you had a great service with us today. Do contact us on the numbers displayed on your screen. We would love to hear from you. And join us again same time next week for another Spirit-filled service. Thank you. God bless you. Have a lovely week.